Hey everybody, it's Iron Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well on what's been a very active Sunday. For marginal risk and uh, not really even a tornado watch for this section, we've had uh, quite a few tornado warnings over here and also severe thunderstorm warnings as well. Some uh, special weather statements as well, too, to go along with that, special marine warnings. So the activity is expected to continue. We've had um, no tornado reports as of late, but I did hear rumor of possibly one report over towards the southern half of the Florida Panhandle from this morning storms. But we're seeing a lot of activity over here right now. And it's troubling to see that there's some uh, discrete looking cells right here. Wouldn't call them super cells, but... With the environment that we have, even though there wasn't a whole lot in the way of instability at the time, or at least not when it was originally forecasted yesterday or last night, seems like this area is somewhat overperforming. That's why even with the marginal risk, you always have to watch. So this is going to be an area of interest right here as well. Would go live, but I've been having a... Uh, Wi-Fi issues throughout the day, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to stream this I hope i can even get this video up if i'm being honest because i've had to restart my computer three times for some reason i haven't been able to get good signal but alongside that severe threat over here towards florida and southern georgia we also have the heavy rain that's been ongoing over here towards the west and also significant snow in fact brandon Kopic is over here towards the yeah, sierra nevada region chasing the uh, snowstorm right now and there's a significant snow expected over here. Maybe about three to four feet are possible here as well. And then over towards San Francisco, San Jose, been a lot of road closures and reports of flash flooding here as well. So this has been a big problem. Also, the wind has been a huge problem as a result of the atmospheric river right now. So, and that's actually expected to continue. So we're going to be watching that. And probably talking about that over the course of the next couple of days as well so just on today alone there's a lot to unpack with that but even when we go out into the future there's gonna be a big pattern flip ongoing with that so we'll go ahead and get into that really quickly as well so one other thing before I move on to the uh, week ahead and beyond here one thing I want to make sure I mentioned in case I didn't was the high risk that we have over here that's been issued for excessive rainfall over towards uh, LA, Long Beach, Anaheim is on the edge of it in Santa Barbara right here, as well as uh, Oxnard. This is pretty rare to see from the uh, Weather Prediction Center here. So if you're over here towards this area, especially over the course of the next 24 hours in particular, you need to be making sure that you are staying away from flooded roadways. I know this sounds corny but turn around don't drown is a great way to keep you safe there's no reason to be driving through flooded wa waterways or flooded roadways whatever it may be if you see water just turn around man honestly so anyone that's over towards these areas here in california definitely make sure that you are least trying to avoid going out if it's completely unnecessary and having a way to go to higher ground if needed that being said here, also looking at that severe weather threat once again, there's two areas of interest over here towards Florida and actually over here towards California where there's been a few tornadoes over here the last couple of days. We do also have a marginal risk there as well. Although for today, I think the worst of our threat over here towards Florida is almost done here. Southern Florida has already had their share of the action as far as tornadoes, so I'm thinking the threat for them is kind of going to simmer down considering we're losing instability there. But I'm still watching over towards San Francisco right now. Wind threat is still possible over all three regions, and then the hail threat over towards Florida is actually at 5%, which is a little bit of a shock to me. Although I did see a couple of parameters with the lapse rates here being moderately impressive, so it's not surprising. But not quite expected either it's kind of a weird kind of a weird setup with that as well and then that same threat's going to linger in southern florida once again tomorrow with the uh, storm system shift into the south here so once again miami you're gonna have to be on the lookout here and then over towards the keys as well it's the wind and hail threat this time though not so much of a tornado threat but that obviously can change then after that we are watching over here again towards 
LA, Santa Barbara, and San Diego for more shower and thunderstorm activity as that atmospheric river continues to dump on this area right here. After that point, pretty much from days four through six, potential for severe weather is going to be low. And then after we go towards day seven, we start to see predictability too low. So as we go further along here, we do have to be on the lookout for the change in the weather pattern, which we've kind of been talking about over the last couple of days. So as we go forward on the flood threat, there's actually a day two high risk that's been issued here over towards the valley of LA here. So like I said, very concerned about the threat of flash flooding. And as we continue to go towards day three, we already have that slight risk in effect, which is not something you see often here. So definitely need to be on the lookout there. Once we go towards the day four, that threat starts to diminish finally though, all for day five to show yet another threat over here towards San Fran and San Jose, which if I'm being honest, while I'm hoping this isn't the case, the likelihood of this being upgraded is considerable at this point, I would say. So onto the models here. So that way you can see exactly where I'm getting this, where I'm getting all this info from. We'll go ahead and look at the Euro first. Here's that atmospheric river over here for the West. And then here's our current storm system that's causing all our troubles over here towards Florida. This is going to push south, like I mentioned before, and this is going to allot for one more opportunity at some shower, some increased shower storm activity over towards Miami and the Keys. And then after that, towards the backside, we could see a couple of storms possible as we go from Tuesday into Wednesday. But really, the tension starting out is going to shift more over towards, like I said, southwest here in particular. A lot of heavy rain, a lot of wind and maybe a couple severe storms wouldn't be out the question either a marginal risk could be issued but flooding is definitely going to be the main topic heavy rain is going to be the main topic undoubtedly so as we continue to go forward here we'll see some ridging begin to occur here and we'll see nice little plume of moisture here from the pineapple express coming in here this is the name of the storm track that we usually end up having here this is a very famous uh storm route that we often will end up looking at during this time of year but as we continue to look at that moisture route its way into the midwest here we're going to probably see some another little swath of heavy rain begin and maybe if we can get something to interact like this system right here towards the backside, we may get to see some snow over here towards the dakotas and maybe even let's say towards the um ah, my brain did stop working it's a fly near actually towards Minnesota and Wisconsin, maybe even the UP of Michigan here. And then as time goes on, here is when we start to see that little shift in the pattern here. And there is a concern that I have here, and it really just depends on whether or not one of these storm system really starts to ramp up here. The warm air that's gonna start trying to set itself up here towards Ozarks Southeast here, we can get enough of that. That could be a setup for some severe weather here. While I don't think anything magnanimous is going to come out of this based off what I'm seeing now, this is definitely something that we got to watch because at this point, obviously, like I said, I've said in many videos, you have to look for a trend, not a forecast at 180 hours out because that's over a week away. So as we continue to draw forward here, here's this first storm system looks pretty stout at this point as we reach about 200 hours out, maybe could see some winter weather out of the on the uh, back side of this and then from that point you start to see this pretty notable trough begin to kick in here and bring in some cold air to the east now so this is going to end up resulting in what's looking to be a pattern flip based off of the euro thing is though gfs is kind of showing a different outcome with this which is making it an even tougher forecast here so that's why i say you always look for trends at this point instead of an actual forecast when you're looking into the medium to long range here we pretty much start out the same and we get a pretty notable ridge over the uh, eastern half of the u.s here but eventually the same thing starts to play out but it's really once we get to about 150 hours where things start to differ between the two models here but we're not quite as certain start to see this storm system and it doesn't really just it just doesn't really have that same kind of a uh, tilt orientation here it looks more so like a very broadly uh tilted trough here maybe even neutral tilted maybe trying to go negative but it just doesn't really 
get itself quite as organized as what the euro shows here and then the ridging kind of starts to fade with that as well if that trough digs a little bit more we could get some ridging and maybe beyond 240 hours out we could be dealing with a much bigger storm system possibly it'll be interesting to see uh, which one of these two trends went out because more often than not during this time of year these two will have sometimes some different trends and then eventually one will start to eventually lean into the other here as we continue to go forward here is a better looking trough here starting to come into play but of course we're 300 hours out so we're pretty much in no man's land at this point but fact of the matter is though look how active we start to get as we go towards the end of this model run here and i've been kind of seeing this signal on and off a little bit for the last few days in regards to the back half of the month here but it definitely looks like we're seeing a little bit more in the way of evidence with that as well so one thing we'll make note of here and we'll go ahead and actually set this into a loop is what our air masses are going to look like here so here's the point where we start to see some of that ridging this is when we'll really start to be warm over towards the southeast then here's that first storm system and then much more cold air is going to start to uh, run rampant towards the back half of this 10-day period that we're seeing here a little bit of a different solution here of course like i said before with the gfs so we're really just going to be having to watch the trends on these two and comparing them probably day in and day out for the next couple of days here this could even change by tomorrow though so something to make note of there but if we were to go ahead and um, throw this into a loop here notice like i said before that trough just doesn't really dig as far as the euro does and as a result there's still cold air that comes in but not quite as strongly it's not as strong of a signal here for sure but there is something i'm trying i'm trying to keep an extra close eye on and making note of as well is that we have a, a pretty strong warm air mass further up to the north and that could play a factor in what's ahead here over the next 14 to 16 days based off the gfs here if this ends up being kicked off to the uh, north and east though we could be talking a different story as well where maybe we might have a bit of a stronger cold air mass here this is kind of almost serving as a blocking high right now towards the end of the run here we'll show it to you again there it is right there this blocking high comes in and it kind of just disrupts everything if that ends up continuing to be the case here we might have a little bit calmer of a weather pattern here so as a result as to what the temperatures will look like here we can pretty much just set this in a loop here and we'll see pretty much a similar deal here when we start to see that ridging coming in at about um, 96 hours plus that's when we start to see that those 60s a few 70s even towards florida coming into play and then after that that's when you start to see that switch flip and then we start to see those cold air temperatures start to return here like i said different look on the gfs where we're going to be seeing a little period where it's going to be warmer but it's not going to be quite as strong here because of the amplitude of that trough it's not going to really uh, be able to pull warm air out ahead of it which would limit the severe weather threat if this plays out here so like i said it's going to be interesting to see which of these two uh, trends ends up winning out because more than likely these are going to change in some way shape or form how significantly is the question though and then we go towards the back half here we do eventually start to see that cold air try to start to win out again but it really is just dependent on um how that area of high pressure ends up acting over here towards northern or northeastern canada here towards the prop towards maybe the maybe heading towards greenland and iceland as well so one other thing i want to make note of to look at here is also going to be the dew point our moisture returns are going to be the key factor to potential severe weather later down the line this week and what i'm paying attention to most right now is mainly going to be towards the uh southern plains right now maybe the southeast but i'm really thinking the southern plains are going to be the point of interest at this time here so here we are looking 
and we do see a decent moisture return as we go to, up to about 100 hours out but really it's sunday that kind of has been it's really friday to sunday that's been kind of interesting me a bit more and i don't really see much in the way of a return here but i was kind of looking a little bit more towards the southeast at the time towards like the gulf coast maybe and we do see uh, some sufficient dew points here we can get a little bit of instability with this we don't need much but a little bit of instability could get some uh, storms going here some of which could reach severe limits then maybe over towards southern georgia maybe florida like the area we're seeing right now could be a point of interest and then towards the back end of that we see another little area where we have a uh, moisture surge here don't have the richest moisture here but it could be sufficient enough for some storms timing i think is going to be a little bit off based off of this run here of course we know that this can change very quickly it changed quickly with today's storm this was actually expected today's storms are actually expected to really take off a little bit later from the looks of it and then of course as we go towards the back end with the cooler temperatures starting to take over here we kind of lose that moisture return so it's not a surprise that severe weather kind of drops off from that point we go to the gfs kind of a different look here we do see that same moisture return come into play here although not anywhere near as impressive there is a point where we do start to see an increase over here towards the gulf states as we get towards sunday though it actually interestingly enough looks a little bit better towards the uh parts like southern alabama southern georgia Florida, however, doesn't look like it's going to be in play because, like I said, that trough digging has a large part to do with that. But we do get enough moisture here towards southern Georgia and Alabama. I just don't think forcing will come into play enough for this to come for this to uh, come to fruition as it stands right now. As we continue to go forward, we see a really big moisture return start to come in, albeit a weak one. But at some point i do think that this will be a sign of things to come here especially as we head towards march maybe but like i said this is a signal that's over 300 hours out so like i said we're looking for trends but this does kind of make you raise a brow here if you're a weather weenie or weather nerd like i am so that being said let's go ahead and lastly look at our precip type here we'll start out with the euro and then switch over to the gfs Pretty much putting this in loop like we've did earlier here so like i said the main thing to make note of here with the euro is of course this first storm system doing what it's doing and then once we get to about 120 hours we start to see these more stout storm systems coming into play here and i think i'll let this run again and so i can switch over to that storm system at about 130 hours actually about 150 hours excuse me but here we go starting to see that cold air starting to push its way back down to the south with that trough digging and like i said it's really when the gulf coast states become a point of interest we do get a good bit of moisture from the pineapple express setup that we have here and with that cold air that's an interesting signal it's the first time i've seen this signal in a little bit here could be a big time southern plains snowstorm mm. and then as we go forward of course that trough starts to push more so towards the northeast and then eventually we could be dealing with a uh, ohio valley snowstorm maybe even the uh, great lakes coming into play here as well if this trends in this manner here at 210 hours out we could be dealing with the nor'easter too and getting a nice little burst of snow out of that but if we compare that to the GFS, it's going to be a much different look once we get to about 150 out. There's our first system. Here's our second system out west coming into play. And then here we go again. And with that trough not digging, it shifts the snow thread a little bit further to the north here. But it could still be some heavy snow here. Look at this signal right here where we see the uh, decibels of the snow here could easily be some significant totals here if this comes to fruition but like i said with it not with it not digging as far to the south that trough eventually we start to a run out of moisture a little bit and then b we're seeing this progress a little bit more to the north a little faster 
and this is not going to end up being a nor'easter type setup maybe more of an interior northeast snowstorm here some areas could even start as rain and end out as snow versus some of these areas being all snow compared to the euro run after that here's when the storm pattern really starts to pick up here but with that trough again not digging at cold air this is going to stay a little bit further to the north for a little bit longer so like i said tale of two models here gonna be uh a tough go trying to figure out what to expect next over the next day or two especially as we start to look towards the long range again but definitely expect a little bit of an increase in weather activity over here towards the back half of february that being said thanks for letting me talk to you appreciate you guys all being here you enjoyed the video you found it useful definitely hit that like button hit that subscribe button if you're new around here definitely would at least consider it also hit that share button and leave a comment if you would that'd be awesome but that being said it's been tired metalhead weatherman i'll see you guys again soon until then take care and i'll see you again take care and have a good day